when our Kerala center was finding difficulty in paying our mortgages in 1990s, he came forward and gave a challenge to us in one of the banquet. He said, you raise half the amount, and he, along with the Dilip Burgis, whom you will meet soon, they matched it, and we paid off the whole mortgage for Kerala Center. And he has also been supportive of many of the India chairs, India programs, in many of the universities when we were raising funds for Columbia University. We raised up to $1.2 million. I'm talking about early 1990s. But we could not raise any more funds. Then he came forward and put together the remaining money, another $1.2 million. And of course, that became or total more than $5 million, and now it is even much becoming bigger. And he also made a substantial contribution for India program at University of Pennsylvania. And just this year at Stony Brook University, may I request Sridhar Menon to join me here and say a few words, and then introduce our keynote speaker. I'm not going to say any more, few more words because there's no room for speeches. <laughs> and other than saying that uh, he said all the things what I did, all I want you guys to know, those who don't know, the Columbia Chair is going to be uh, set up as a center for Indian economic policy. We are just signing an agreement with the School of SIPA, increasing the endowment of about $12 million. <laughs> and we are setting up a center for Indian economic policies. And one of the subjects to be taken will be the cancer of corruption in India. That's why the center is being set up. Okay, now let me introduce uh, the keynote speaker. It's impossible for me to introduce uh, Srinivas Srinivasan. I don't know what capacity to introduce. You have all known him for many years here. He was one of the awardees before. So let me start from the ground. I would say that he is the father of two wonderful kids I know, Krishna and Durga. Both of them are here. Krishna and Durga, would you please stand up? <laughs> and he is the husband of Rupa Only Krishna, who herself is a recipient of Arjuna Award. I don't know whether to tell you in what, his rifle shooting. <laughs> I'm so glad, you know, Sri is still alive. <laughs> I asked Rupa today, what is the one bad thing I can tell about Srinath? And she told me, he is the most amazing man I ever met. <laughs> so there is no bad thing. <laughs> With that, let me get in the main job of introducing Srinath Srinivasan, who has been a very good, close family friend. I've known him for a number of years. He started his career with uh, Columbia University. He's a professor of journalism, worked his way up. And he became the dean of the School of Journalism, Columbia University for a number of years. And uh, we have all known him in you know, divergent activities. He took a substantial lead in setting up Saja with the South Asian Journalist Association. And where he got me was Four weeks before he left Columbia University, <laughs> I had asked him in a private conversation, why are you wasting your time in Columbia University? Shouldn't you be looking at the private sector? And I said, you know, there is a lot of opportunities for you. You can do very well in the private sector. But it's true, I'm thinking about it, etc. And I said, Lestri, will you give me a copy of the resume? Let me try. I never got it, because at the time, he was probably working to get in his current job as the chief digital officer of Metropolitan Museum or not. Congratulations to Sri and I hope you're doing very well in that job. The only problem I have found him in that job was when he was in Columbia University, if I send him an email, I got an instantaneous response in about two seconds. Now it takes about three days for me to get a response to the email. So he must be doing very well at the museum. <laughs> Another thing you guys uh, may or may not know, I think Ambassador Nambia alluded to that. He is the son of a foreign service officer, Ambassador T.P. Srinivasan, who was in Washington, who was in New York. 
And uh, I don't know why he didn't go to diplomatic career, you know, and his, everybody knows uh, how creditable Sri, uh, T.P. Srinivasan service has been both in Washington, New York, Geneva and all the places, you know, he is still very active. He is still taking a very lead role in improving the education system in uh, Kerala state as a government uh, appointed nominee for that position. And most recently, Sri's uncle has been appointed as ambassador to the United Arab Emirates. <laughs> so it's a diplomatic family. I don't know why he trying to change path. Maybe because I think Rupa was there, you know, destined for him in a different career path. I said, with those words, I won't take much time. It's my honor, privilege, and personal pressure to introduce you, Sri Nath Srinivasa. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. It's an absolute honor for me to be here tonight and to spend a few minutes with all of you. I first want to thank Sridhar Menon, who is never thanked enough in public. He has done more for more institutions in the United States to promote India and India-US friendship than anyone else I know, and has taken less credit for it than anyone else I know. Let's all thank Sridhar Menon for everything he's done. Having worked at Columbia and now at the Met, I know how much people who are philanthropists do the work in part because of the recognition they get. Sridhar is the one person in all these years that I know who hasn't done anything for himself, but has done things for the community, and he's someone who can inspire everybody in this room. So thank you, Sridhar, for that warm introduction, but more importantly, thank you for everything you've done for all of us. These days when I am asked to speak at an event, I double check to make sure they got the right guy. Because there are some other Srinivasans who are much better known than me. Every weekend I hope you are watching on PBS to, uh, to see the PBS News Hour with Hari Srinivasan mm -hmm. who was honored here at Kerala Center a few years ago. And more importantly, there is now a judge in the second highest court in the United States named Sri Srinivasan. He's also the son of a man named T.P. Srinivasan. And he also has twin children, including a daughter whose name is Maya, which is my daughter's middle name. And so people have been congratulating my father on, my, on, on his son becoming a judge, which isn't the case. And one day, I got a call from uh, the Embassy of India in Washington, when, uh, and they said, the Prime Minister's wife would like to say hello to you. And I was uh, flabbergasted, and I uh, answered the phone. I actually stood up, because I was talking to Mrs. Manmohan Singh. And she said, Bete, how are you? I said, I'm fine, ma'am. Um, and uh, she said, how are your parents? I said, they're fine, ma'am. She kept saying, why are you saying ma'am? Why didn't you call me auntie? And I said, yes, ma'am. I knew there was something wrong. What she had done was she had turned to the Indian Embassy staff and said, please bring on the line T.P. Srinivasan's son. She meant the, the person who would be the judge, not me. But we had a very nice conversation. <laughs> I want to congratulate the entire staff and team at Kerala Center. It is just amazing what the organization has done. And the success has been especially nice because to see how much the second generation and third generation have gotten involved. And let's congratulate everyone on the success of the Kerala Center. I wanted to um, acknowledge three folks who uh, have been part of my journey as a Malayali here in the United States. Ambassador Nambia, who you heard from already, uh, as well as Professor Soma Sundaran, who's here, who is uh, the kind of the leader of the Indian community at Columbia, and one of, along with Professor Jagdish Bhagwati and Professor Padma Desai, among the senior most people at Columbia, and a real role model to all of us. So I hope you'll say hello to Professor Soma Sundaran. And then, of course, to Tom Abraham, who has created more organizations of Indian origin than anyone else. And so he had to create the global organization of people of Indian origin as well. We also have a wonderful slate of awardees tonight. I hope you'll take the time of looking in the brochure and showing their achievements.
achievements to the young people in your life, I think you will be able to inspire them. It was one of my real honors to receive one of these awards a few years ago. I bring greetings from my parents, T.P. Srinivasan and Lekha Srinivasan, who you heard from about already. Uh, they live now in Kerala, which tells you that they could have retired to any place in the world, but they chose to move to Trivandrum and live there after having lived abroad for 45 years. They've instilled in me a lifelong love of all things Kerala and all things Malayali, and that's why I ended up marrying a Malayali girl and having two fully Malayali kids. As, it's a real coincidence tonight that uh, Rupa's coach, Dr. Sunny Thomas, is here tonight, and I'm glad that you'll be able to meet him um, as well. Growing up all over the world as I did, it would have been very easy for me to lose touch with my Kerala roots, but my parents wouldn't let that happen. I can admit that I didn't always appreciate all the Malayali things we had to do. When we were in New York, every weekend, it seemed, we'd go to events for organizations like Kerala Samajam and the NBA. NBA is not the National Basketball Association, <laughs> but the Nair Benevolent Association. <laughs> I resented the fact that many of these events coincided with things I cared about, the Super Bowl playoffs, the World Series, etc. Most of the parents didn't care about such American events, and so no, and so no re saw no reason to adjust the meeting times. Truth is that those events and meetings were key to the community building that you see in front of you today. And it was really important for the way in which Malayalis came together in this country. 25 years later, I was invited to speak at a Malayali event on Super Bowl Sunday. I was, of course, going to say, no, I couldn't make it, but it was wisely scheduled at, at lunchtime. The organizer told me that he and his children would never have thought of organizing an event on Super Bowl evening. It tells you something about our community and how much it has changed. Now, after 21 years at Columbia, I've had the uh, pleasure to move to a new job, uh, not as well paying a job as what Sridhar tried to organize for me, but uh, to work at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. There, I get to see folks from around the world. We have 6.2 million people who come to the museum every year. And in the couple of months I've been there, I've been connecting and speaking with every Indian that I come across. In fact, tomorrow, there is a Diwali celebration at the Met from 2.30 to 4. If any of you are in the city, I hope you'll come. It's a big, free public event. But I have yet to run into any Malayalis there. And so, I thought that I would just say to all of you that I think along with all the wonderful things we do as a community where we get involved in our education, we get involved in our careers, and we get involved in the Kerala and, and Indian events we do, it's really important for us to support cultural institutions. The Kerala Center, of course, does wonderful cultural work, but there are so many museums and cultural institutions all across the tri-state area that can benefit from real participation by Malayalis like ourselves. And you saw just, just this week, the Queen's Museum has reopened. And like that, there are so many institutions that would really benefit from all of your support. And it would be great for your children and families to be as involved there as you are here at the Kerala Center and with events. And I know that I'm, I can see Tom Abraham is getting ready to stand up. So I'm going to just say to all of you that what the Kerala Center has done in 21 years has been absolutely spectacular and a real uh, example for other Indian organizations that they've stayed together, that they've worked together. Normally you have three Malayalis, you get two or four organizations out of that. But here Kerala Center has stayed together and with the support of all of you has done so well. And my family and I look forward to continuing to be uh, supporters and be helpful in any way we can to the Kerala Center. Thank you very much and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.